Good morning, folks. We've got full analysis of yesterday's Flare and CME event. There are a number of interesting stories and some things to see around the net, so let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star was much quieter. No solar flares. Minor stealth CME released at the 8 o'clock position, but nothing at Earth, and the solar wind is quiet too. So let's analyze that eruption from yesterday. Eyes on the center of the active region for an arch connecting the front and back. We are going to zoom in on it and also do a rock back and forth in time so we can see that bright arch which is connecting the front and back. The existing fields didn't like it. Snap due to the extra energy in the region as they were unable to hold their structure, blasting out a CME pretty much on the Earth-facing longitude. Well, both NASA and NOAA's Enlil spirals are updated, and they are wrong. First, tight burst that will impact Earth on March 11th. The timing isn't bad, but the SOHO frames clearly show a wide burst ejection with material going across about half the northern solar system. That is shown on NOAA's Enlil spiral, but they have mistakenly shown it as two separate eruptions, two CMEs with a blank spot in the middle where Earth is. That is not what CMEs do. It is a single, continuous burst and the cloud shockwave will arrive here at Earth on the night of the 10th or morning of the 11th will produce minor geomagnetic events and nothing more. The coronal holes will be facing Earth and beginning to turn away during that time. We are due for one more big shake in this polar field extreme scenario from the interplanetary magnetic fields of the Sun, and it should be coming soon. West Pacific continued taking the uptick with the Philippines hitting magnitude 6 range there. Those ones they can handle. Quick weather share. Sandia should be clearly visible from the western mesa of volcano cliffs every striation and shadow, but as a psychotic wind gust came roaring in, the dust and sand blanked out visibility. Utterly terrible news for the eastern states as that wind was feeding the low over the states which is going to drop major storms tonight. Eyes open everyone, the power heading into that storm at ground level is harsh. Nice collaboration up first in the articles between Sweary and NASA, showing a daily water cycle on the moon driven by heating of the fine surface materials and short-lived evaporative and condensing events. They also put an amazing ultraviolet shot of the moon in there. Speaking of NASA, they want to make quiet supersonic jets to alleviate the no overland rule for sonic booms. So you might see these quietly over your head someday, but honestly, look at the bow shock. Looks too big and uncurved, almost unnaturally like any bow shock I've ever seen. Folks, in the realm of cosmology, it can be difficult for newcomers to understand. About as much as the novice can glean is that they are looking for dark matter and they can't find it. Well, if you get past the tough language in this piece, it does summarize the top-level picture of the field, their failures, and their future prospects. Last but not least, they are going to try something with MMS, something it wasn't designed to do or even conceptualized. They are going to change their formation and hunt for plasma turbulence in the solar wind. This is unquestionably a move to solidify their understanding of dusty plasma and plasma turbulence in the wake of its dominance over their observations and newer hypotheses. Go Plasma Go! Folks on the Suspect Sky channel, the Chan Thomas Adam and Eve Earth Catastrophe Cycle series continues with the secret pages of the book that the CIA did not release. He is going to be on our Fly on the Wall podcast today for website members, found under Premium on the menu, then click Fly on the Wall. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.